Beach. Morning, good everyone. Just good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lazier. Oh, it's beautiful out there. The sun is shining. The sky is blue. The boys and girls are all decked out in their beautiful first communion outfits. Uh, their suits, their ties, their beautiful like, dresses, their veils, their Sunday vests. And uh, it's a good morning. It is a good morning. Uh, how good it is to see all of you in the church this morning. We welcome you at the very beginning. The first communicants, their parents, their grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, brothers, and friends. Uh, we welcome two grandfathers uh, to our celebration this morning. Uh, Deacon Jack Smith, your granddaughter. Right here in front, right here, right? Right there? Yeah. I think I stood next to you in the picture, didn't I? What did I tell you that you should do? If you're going to stand next to me in the picture, you've got to smile pretty much. You do that? <laughs> Good for you. And we got Deacon Fred Sims' granddaughter. And she is where? Right here. Adeline. Sweet Adeline. She did the first reading and a beautiful job on it. And I keep buttoning her grandfather's buttons because they kept popping off. Good to see Adeline. And Father Moises over there. And Father Spavik here. We all welcome all of you. Two pets this morning. If, any, if you don't remember anything from what I said, just remember very simply that God is love. How old are you? Eight. About seven, eight years ago, your mom and dads brought your little son or daughter to church to baptize. Some maybe came to St. Patrick Church here to be baptized, others to other parishes. But uh, at that moment, when you brought your son, your daughter, who are now seven, eight years old, first communicants, when you brought your son or your daughter to be baptized, either here or someplace else, but the priest or the deacon, they ask a very important question Do you accept the responsibility of training your child in the practice? I've been asking that question of parents for 43 years. <laughs> Never once have those parents answered no. Have you accepted the responsibility of training your child to practice the faith? God bless you for doing that. God bless you parents for doing that. It's a tremendous responsibility when you think about training your child practice of our faith. It's a tremendous responsibility, but again though, it's a tremendous privilege, what a beautiful privilege it is to be able to raise your child in the practice of our faith. What a tremendous privilege that is. And I hope and pray that all throughout these past seven or eight years, you've been doing your best that you can possibly do to raise your son, your daughter, in the practice of our faith. Today, as they make their first communion, they're making their second big step, like I mentioned at the beginning of Mass. They're taking their second big step into their full initiation process into our church. The first step took, back in their, not, not took place back in their baptism. The second step is taking place today in first communion. And the third step will be when they are confirmed, uh, whatever that happens to be in the parish of the law. Here at St. Patrick's in the South of the The three steps of initiation, baptism, first communion, and confirmation. Each one of those sacraments is a beautiful expression of God's love for us. Through baptism, we become a son and daughter. Communion, we receive the body and blood of Christ in communion. Confirmation, a reconfirming of the seven gifts of God the Holy Spirit in confirmation. What a beautiful moment this is today as we celebrate this great sacrament of the Eucharist. I was thinking about something. Can I pick on you? I can, huh? What do I have in my pill pen right here? What is that? A hundred dollar bill. Wow. Would you want that for your first communion gift? You would, huh? <laughs> Who would not want this hundred dollar bill for your first communion gift? It's real. 
do, huh? You ever pulled a hundred dollar bill before? Oh. Excuse me. How about you? Have you ever held a hundred dollar bill before? The big second grader is a lot different than what they wrote out in second grade. Well, I gotta, you know, uh, we got a little pledge drive coming up here in a couple of weeks, folks. I'm uh, in touch with some of your parents back here. But anyway, uh, what would you say, what would you tell me if I gave you this hundred dollar bill for your first communion? What would you say to me? Thanks, huh? Would you ever forget that I have ever given you this hundred dollar bill? Never, huh? Would you always be thankful to me for doing this for you? Would you too? You would, huh? Good answer. You what? You'd say thank you. And you'd be happy. Right. Now, can you imagine what that little hundred dollar bill, you know, big deal, you know, uh, got a couple of kids. And if you go to McDonald's, it's going to cost you quite a bit of a dollar bill right here. Uh, but can you imagine how good you would feel if you got this hundred dollar bill for your first communion? Well, when you think about it, when you think about it, what is the greatest gift that you receive when you make your first communion? What's a gift that's far better, far better than a hundred dollar bill? And what's that? Exactly perfect answer receiving the body and blood of Jesus. Wow, you know, a hundred dollar bill, big deal. It is to you too, but anyway, <laughs> but it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone in a while. You know, you go to McDonald's, you go out to Target, you go to Kmart, you go to uh, whatever. You probably can't even buy a pair of shoes at uh, you know at. Uh, Van Mauer for this right here, but uh, uh, we, give, we give this greatest gift, this beautiful gift of Jesus, of Jesus to make our first communion. And how thankful, how thankful we should be to Jesus for that beautiful gift of his body and blood and communion. Far more precious, far, far more precious than a little hundred dollar bill going to be gone maybe in a couple of days, but Jesus is here forever. The first communion that you make today will be like the communion you make when you get to be as old as I am. How old do you think I am? <laughs> I'm answer that question. Anyway, uh, it is a precious gift that you're going to receive all of your life. Every day, every time you come into communion. It's a beautiful gift because God is love. God is love. And he wants to share himself with each and every one of us. And he does that by giving us his body and blood communion. This is a tremendous privilege that you're going to be receiving today. Today. But also, hopefully tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday or tonight when you go to church. Every time you come to church, you should come every weekend. Every weekend you come to church to be thankful to God. To be thankful to God for the precious gift of his body blood that we receive in communion. What's your first name? Eric. Like Eric said, he would never forget on our bill. Don't even think about it, Eric. You're not going to get it. <laughs> he would never forget me giving him this beautiful gift on our bill. However, never forget the precious gift that Jesus gives you when you make your first communion in his body and his blood. Not only today, but every time you come to church and receive communion. Do that. Remember one thing that I have to say today, that is God.